I'm really pleased to present you our first speaker of the day, who is Didier Bouchon. He is a professor at the University of Poitiers at the Ecology and Biology of Interactions Lab. And he's also uh, the director of the Doctoral School of Chemistry, Ecology, Geosciences, Agrosciences, Theodore Monod. Uh, he studies the dynamics and the evolution of bacterial symbiosis with arthropods. In particular, he is interested in, in parasitic bacteria such as Wolbachia that uh, alter the sexual phenotype of food lice. His research uh, also now focuses on the impact uh, of the microbiome on the evolution of the, of the host. So Didier, uh, Didier Bouchon, so uh, the, uh, the conference is uh, it's for you now. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, nice introduction and a nice presentation of myself. <laughs> okay, so good morning, everyone. I will uh, introduce the, that uh, morning uh, by speaking about uh, the European Charter for Researchers and the Code for, of Conduct for Recruitment. And uh, as uh, it has been uh, mentioned, I, I am the head of the doctoral school uh, Theodore Monod, with, which is a French uh, uh, researcher, past researcher, and uh, the, um, and uh, I will uh, focus. Uh, okay, my talk will be in, in two two parts. I will uh, just uh, present uh, the European context uh, of uh, the European Charter for researchers and especially for early early uh, stage researchers. And then after I will focus on uh, rules, French rules, because of course I know the, the French system, but I think that it's a good uh, information for you because I am pretty sure that uh, everything uh, is working uh, with the same rules uh, in different country, European countries. So let's go. Uh, okay, uh, so I will start by the European context. And uh, the context is the European uh, Charter for Research. I uh, put on my slide uh, some uh, links, and uh, you can have the slide uh, probably uh, at the end uh, of the, my um, speech. So what is the European content? Uh, content? Uh, so the, there are two uh, main uh, organisms, European organisms. Of course, the European Commission and uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, association, which is the European University Associations. So the, these two uh, institutions or two policies uh, produce some uh, uh, recommendation. So the Re uh, European uh, Commission uh, um, gave the European Charter for Researcher. I will describe uh, this uh, charter uh, later in 2005 five and uh, uh, produce also principle for innovative doctoral training in uh, 2011. And uh, the European University Association, uh, uh, maybe I will make my uh, pointer, okay. Uh, so the European University Association uh, produce uh, two uh, recommendations or principles which are called Salzburg because uh, the, the meeting was in uh, Salzburg in 2005 and 2010. So I will uh, describe all these uh, recommendations uh, quickly just uh, to see what, what, what is the content uh, and uh, what uh, was probably uh, uh, rules in many uh, countries, European countries. So what is the European Charter for researchers? So this is a set of uh, general principles and uh, requirements uh, with, uh, which uh, specify, specifies the roles, responsibilities, and uh, entitlements of researcher, as well as of employer or founder of researchers. Uh, you, I must notice that uh, these are recommendations. But uh, you will see that in France now, uh, these are rules. Uh, so uh, it tends to be now uh, rules. So I will uh, describe uh, first the definition of uh, this uh, charter. And then after I will describe briefly uh, the code of conduct. So the definitions for the European commissions, what are uh, researchers? 
So as you can see, researchers are professionals engaged in the conception of creation of new knowledge, products, processes, methods, systems, and so on, and in the management of the projects concerned. And uh, if you look to that definition, of course, uh, um, this definition include basic research, applied research, strategic research, or transfer to knowledge. And within that definition, uh, which was uh, proposed by the European Commission, there is a, a sub-group, uh, I would say like that, uh, which are called early stage researcher. Uh, and uh, this uh, early stage researcher uh, are researchers in the first four years, uh, meaning that this is a full-time uh, equivalent of their research. That means that this early stage researcher uh, include research training, meaning PhD thesis. And uh, we will speak about that uh, later. And of course, if they are uh, early stage researchers, they are also experienced researchers uh, that have more than four years uh, of uh, full-time equivalent in research. So uh, the European Commission uh, also defined employers uh, employers are all public or private institutions which employ researchers. And you go back uh, to the definition of researchers. And there are also funders. And funders are bodies which provide funding, including stipend, awards, grants, fellowship, and, all, and so on. So every fund, uh, funding you can uh, imagine. And finally, uh, this uh, European recommendation um, uh, define the employment point or employment, which means that any type of contract. And uh, you will see uh, later in my presentation that we will speak about uh, a contract for doctoral um, research. Okay. So now the code of, the code of conduct, uh, which was uh, proposed by the European Commission is uh, there are different points, and I will just describe briefly these points. So first point is the recruitment. Recruitment, uh, sorry. Uh, this uh, process should be open, efficient, transparent, supportive, and of course, internationally comparable. So that's very important. That means that normally, if we uh, follow this recommendation, the recruitment should be uh, more or less the same in every country in Europe. Uh, the second uh, um, point is the selection. So the selection is under a committee or jury, uh, but the, the committee should be uh, of uh, the, uh, diverse expertise and competencies and uh, include uh, an adequate uh, uh, gender balance. And uh, you will see probably in different committees and jury that we tend to uh, have a gender balance now in, in every jury, jury, even in a PhD jury, of course. Uh, the third point is tra uh, transparency. Uh, transparency means that the information about the recruitment process and selection criteria should be very uh, transparent. Uh, th that means that uh, you sh you should know as a candidate as uh, what are the the process and the selection criteria. The fourth point is uh, judging merit merit. Uh, that means that consideration of the whole range of experience of the candidates, and you should evaluate both qualitatively and quantitatively this uh, merits or range of experience. Uh, another point is variation of the chronological order of, of CVs. Uh, that means that career, uh, career breaks or variation should not be penalized. And it's very important, for, for example, for women in science, which could uh, have a break for uh, make a baby. <laughs> uh, so that's now uh, a point which, uh, which are, uh, could not be penalized in the, 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 the CV of the person, of the candidate. So another point is the recognition of mobilities. Uh, that means that you have to take in account uh, any mobility experience. 
um, recognition of quali qualifications mean that you have on the jury or the committee um, should have an appropriate assessment and evaluation of academic and professional quali qualifications. So not only academic, not only publication, I would say like that. Seniority, uh, uh, the, this point uh, underlines that the level of qualifications uh, required should be in line with the needs of the po position. You should not uh, uh, select a candidate with a too high a level of experience uh, uh, in line of the mission you have to, to, to do with that uh, person. And finally, uh, the last point is the postdoctoral appointments. Uh, the, the European Commission uh, suggests that there is an explicit guidelines for the recruitment of appointment of postdoctoral researcher and should provide career development opportunities. So uh, that uh, because, as you know, postdoctoral researcher are a short contract and not a permanent position. OK, so that's uh, the code of conduct for the European uh, Commission and different uh, institutions for, for the Europe. So if we go back now, uh, starting from that point, the, the European context, to the doctoral education and the re what we call research training, I will uh, uh, mention uh, what uh, I already told you. Uh, some recommendation of the European University Association, and we call it uh, Salzburg recommendations. The last recommendations will be published in 2010. And concerning, uh, so you can uh, have access to that uh, document uh, on, on the um, uh, address I, I put on my site. So I just uh, focus on some uh, very important points. So, for example, for supervision, uh, there is a chapter about uh, supervision, and supervision play um, the the start of the chapter is um, that a sentence, which uh, is clear for everybody. I think uh, supervision plays a crucial role uh, in uh, in the research training, of course. But if you look more carefully. Uh, this recommendation says that uh, supervision uh, must be a collective effort. I underline that part because it's very important. With clearly defined and widened responsibilities of, and there is a list of uh, responsibilities. So, of course, the main supervisor and the supervisory team, if, uh, if any, if uh, there is a, uh, one. Of course, the doctoral candidate. candidate the doctoral school, and I will speak about that uh, later in my speech. Of course, the research group or the lab. And finally, the institution, the university, the uh, research uh, uh, policy and so on. And all this uh, collective effort or all these persons uh, create a living room for the individual development of the doctoral candidate. So that's... Uh, very important, and I will conclude my speech uh, for that. Uh, a doctoral uh, candidate is not alone, and you can see that there is a lot of uh, person who can help uh, that candidate. Uh, so, if we look uh, uh, of uh, the principles which were published by the European University Association. In both the two documents, uh, Salzburg 2005 and Salzburg 2010, uh, they uh, publish uh, 10 basic principles. And uh, I just uh, read quickly this uh, principle. So the first one is that doctoral training is an advancement of knowledge through other original research. So that's quite obvious, uh, but we have to sometimes to to put uh, uh, this uh, uh, clearly. Uh, second, universities need to assume responsibility that research training are designed to meet a new challenge and uh, include appropriate professional career development opportunities. That means that you can offer career development opportunities. 
So you are not just not uh, training uh, doctoral uh, students just for the, the thesis, but for the future also. So the third point is that the importance of diversity of doctoral programs have to be underpinned uh, by quality and sound practice, of course. Doctoral candidates are as early stage research researchers, so you can see that the, the definition of uh, the early, uh, early stage researcher should be recognized as professional, not, not as students per se, but professionals, early stage researcher. So the five point is the crucial role of supervision, of course, and assessment. And this means that this is a contractual, uh, contractual uh, framework of shared responsibility in between doctoral candidates, supervisor, and the institution. And I list uh, in the slide, in the previous slides, uh, all the responsibilities um, in that uh, uh, contractual framework. Uh, the, uh, the point six is achieving critical mass, of course. Point six, uh, seven. It's very important about the duration, and uh, there is a big recommendation that the do doctoral programs should operate within appropriate time duration, and the time duration is between three uh, to four years uh, as a full-time uh, equivalent, of course. So it's not a three or uh, to four years uh, in uh, um, half-time, or but should be a full-time. And you will see uh, uh, with the French uh, system, uh, I will describe uh, later, that uh, the, the, the funding is uh, only three, uh, four years, which could be uh, problematic sometimes. So uh, the, the point eight, uh, the promotion of innovative uh, structures uh, um, uh, needs uh, in this interdisciplinary training and development of transfer, uh, transferable skills. Uh, there is also a point about uh, the mobility. Uh, the mobility should be increased uh, by interdisciplinary, international collaboration, and so on. And of course, uh, the last but not least, uh, answering appropriate and sustainable funding. Uh, you will see also that in many doctoral schools now, the, there is, uh, this is a mandatory, uh, funding should be mandatory, and there is no uh, doctoral student without funding. Okay, though, so that's uh, the, the, these ba basic uh, principles, and all uh, the rules I will describe later came from that uh, principles. So just uh, uh, to focus now on the French uh, perspective, but uh, uh, I uh, already mentioned that this perspective is probably the same in every uh, European country. So the, if we can uh, sum up this perspective, uh, there is a major uh, event. Uh, the major event is that there is a change of scale. And I just present you some uh, uh, metrics, I will say like that, about the number of doctoral students. So in the uh, 90s, uh, there are uh, in France, of course, about uh, uh, 50,000 uh, doctoral students. And you will see later that uh, uh, actually there is about uh, um, 70,000 doctoral students of which uh, there are about 40,000 uh, PhD award uh, every year. That means, uh, as you know, there are the, the PhD uh, contract duration is three years, and every year there is one part, one third, we'd say like that, of students which are uh, awarded every year. And if we look to the number of supervisors, uh, once again in France, uh, in French perspective, there are about um, uh, 25,000 research, uh, research director, professor, or equivalent. And all these categories, I would say experienced researchers, uh, uh, all of them can supervise. But there are also uh, uh, a big part, uh, two, two, two times more, of researchers, lecturers, or equivalents, and many of them can supervise. 
So if you uh, look to the total number, there are um, uh, more or less the same number of supervisors than uh, the number of uh, doctoral uh, students. Uh, just a, a word about the, this slide. You can see that uh, this uh, number of doctoral students is very important because uh, you can imagine that there is not uh, so much uh, permanent position after that. Uh, so that's uh, a problem. And this is why the Ministry of uh, Research in France uh, push uh, um, the doctoral students to apply uh, also in industry or uh, private company and so on. But we can discuss the, that point uh, after my, my talk. Uh, so if um, I uh, go further in some uh, metrics, uh, I look to data for 2017, uh, once again on the French, that's French data. So we uh, registered about 16,000 new doctoral students uh, for that year. Uh, Seventy-two percent uh, are funded, so that uh, this is what I s said a um, few minutes ago. That most of them are funded, but you can see that it's not uh, the 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 all um, uh, students uh, are funded for the PhD, and we we tried to get fund for all the PhD students, and I would say that in um, uh, sciences and uh, uh, hard sciences, uh, all the students are funded. And uh, this is uh, mainly in, uh, uh, I would say, um, human uh, sciences and so on, in which there are not uh, so much funding. So if we look uh, to the number uh, I, I put, so 30% uh, are hired through what we call a doctoral contract, and I will explain what, what is a, a doctoral contract with the university. 11% are hired through a contract with a company, and there is a specific uh, system uh, in French, we, which is called a CIF, uh, which is a, an agreement between a company and a university uh, to hire a, a PhD student or doctoral student. 11% are funded by research uh, in, institution uh, like uh, CNRS, INAI, and so in CERM, uh, That's a research institution which are specific to France. And uh, seven, uh, 16 uh, have uh, foreign funding. So that's mainly foreign students which, are, uh, which have uh, funding for their uh, university, uh, foreign university and uh, about 30 uh, are funded by region or other entities. Uh, and finally, uh, there is 80% uh, uh, of uh, the PhD that, uh, or doctoral students that are not funded, but have an income because they are uh, yet professional. They are mainly teachers, uh, and in this case, is uh, particularly uh, particularly uh, evident or important in uh, human sciences and uh, and some philosophy, uh, uh, social sciences, uh, but not in uh, uh, science hard sciences like uh, biology, ecology, uh, physics, and so on, chemistry, and because uh, probably because uh, for hard sciences uh, which are experimental uh, research. Uh, the doctoral uh, student should be in a lab and uh, should be work uh, on experiment and they have no time to, to do uh, uh, a full-time uh, profession uh, apart, uh, apart uh, the, the doctoral uh, thesis. And finally, 10% have no full-time employment and uh, this tend to decrease, of course, because uh, this is a a problem uh, for for the for the um, doctoral research. So, uh, if I uh, once again uh, continue to focus on French perspective, uh, just a uh, uh, an, an historical of what happens. Uh, so, before the 90s, 
the doctoral training was an exclusive affair between a master, I would say like that, and I put brackets, of course, and a disciple, uh, and uh, also I put uh, brackets, with no outside interference. So that means that sometimes uh, this is a, an affair between two persons, one uh, supervisor, one doctoral student. And uh, this uh, could be a problem because if everything is okay, so there is no problem, but sometimes it could be uh, a problem. So uh, there is an evolution uh, according to histor historical uh, part. And in uh, uh, 92, doctoral schools are created. Uh, in 98, uh, um, uh, the thesis charter that defined the mission of responsibilities uh, have been created. And uh, this uh, thesis uh, charter is signed and approved by, of course, the supervisor or those, if there are many supervisors, the doctoral student, the lab director, and the doctoral school. And uh, I have to mention that the doctoral school is responsible for applying the principle of the thesis charter. So uh, the doctoral school is a kind of control, I would say like that, but also a help for the doctoral student. Uh, in uh, uh, 2009, uh, uh, formalization of the doctoral contract, which is an appointment. So now every uh, doctoral student sign a contract, which he, uh, which is uh, signed by the university, the doctoral school, and the lab director, and so on and so on. So and after that, the doctoral schools are responsible for answering the quality of, you know, of doctoral training, in particular through the establishment of thesis supervision committees. Uh, that's the uh, translation of the French uh, CSC. Uh, and I will explain what, is, uh, what are these committees and the training to thesis supervisor, and we'll uh, finish with that. So, uh, some words about the, these committees. Uh, and uh, these committees have, have been uh, created through a legal uh, framework. There is a law in France uh, which was published in uh, May uh, 2016. And uh, within this law, there is uh, some uh, mandatory, uh, because this is a law, okay? So the doctoral education uh, is... Uh, cited as training for and through research. So it's uh, uh, quite important that to define what is a doctoral education or doctoral training. The role of the thesis supervisor or supervisors is critical, but is not uh, no longer an independent task. That means that there is also another uh, person or institution around the doctoral uh, students. The thesis supervisor or supervisor, of course, carry out their supervision within the framework uh, work of a research group and under the control of a doctoral school. Okay, and finally, uh, the supervisor is responsible to both parties of the supervisory task. That means the former for the scientific project, of course, and the later for the training of a young researcher. That means to offer uh, a career uh, future or career development of the young researcher, not only uh, working on the, of the, on the scientific project. So I will uh, just uh, de describe what is uh, the, the individual follow-up committee, which are now, as you uh, will see in the, next, in the previous uh, slide, uh, mandatory by the law in France. Uh, so the, the committee is, uh, as you know, uh, an individual committee. That means for each uh, doctoral student, there is one committee. This committee uh, is, uh, uh, there is a meeting of this committee each year of the thesis. So there is at, le uh, uh, at least three uh, committees for a three year duration of the thesis. And uh, the meetings are the face-to-face -face meetings with the doctoral students and their supervisor all together, plus the doctoral students alone, plus 
the supervisor alone. So we can uh, earn uh, all uh, the um, person involved in the uh, doctoral project, that means the students plus the supervisor, but we earn also the doctoral students alone, if, uh, and uh, he can speak uh, free uh, if there are some problems, and we, of course, uh, earn also uh, the supervisor alone. So the objectives are uh, clear. Is uh, the, the objective is to check whether the doctoral work is carried out under uh, satisfy, satisfactory conditions, of course. And if not, we can uh, make a proposal for improvement of the doctoral student, the supervisor, and of course the lab director. So there is a mistake here. Uh, what is important is that the committee does not judge uh, the scientific advances, but the progress of the thesis work. We cannot judge, of course, the science, because uh, we cannot judge all uh, the scientific development in the university, but we can judge uh, how the progress of the thesis work uh, is uh, doing, uh, what is the relationship between the supervisor and the uh, doctoral students, and so on and so on or the relationship uh, of the doctoral student within the lab and so on. So I just uh, mentioned uh, as an example, uh, some uh, items that are discussed uh, during the uh, individual follow-up committee. So of course the thesis product progress. So we discuss of course uh, of the scientific context are the issues well identified? And this is a discussion with the and presentation by the doctoral student and, and then a discussion and some questions of, uh, sometimes. We discuss also about the material and technical means. Are they appropriate and sufficient? That means, uh, um, do the uh, doctoral student have uh, any material and technicals to, to make uh, and to work on his research? We discuss also about the timetable. Is it respected? What are the delays and why? There are some problems. Of course, for example, this year or the last year, uh, we have some delays due to the uh, COVID situation or sanitary uh, situation. Uh, we discuss about the scientific uh, communication. And uh, as you know, probably know uh, that uh, scientific co communication is uh, uh, more or less in two parts about publication. So we question and we have question about uh, the number of publication or patents already been pro produced and the authorship uh, in, in the publication. And we are very, uh, we, we are very careful with the authorships. That means uh, the, the doctoral student should be uh, in the first uh, author uh, in uh, some article, not, uh, not all the articles, but some uh, of them, uh, meaning that the, this is the work of the doctoral students. And in, it should be uh, as a first author. As the doctoral student participated in, a, in a international conference, it is because it's a part of the game, I will say like that, on scientific communication. Uh, we look also to the opening to the outside the world, so outside the lab, outside the uh, basic research or academic research. Uh, is there some uh, uh, mobility to, to do that or some other things? Of course, we look to the financial support. Does the doctoral student have a complementarity uh, uh, teaching expertise uh, mission? So uh, there are some many possibilities in university uh, for the doctoral student to make some uh, teaching uh, um, and to have uh, or to gain an experience in teaching, which could be good for uh, the development uh, of uh, his uh, career and uh, to open opportunity, opportunities uh, for, for the future. And of course, we look to the post-thesis preparation, what professional prospects does the doctoral student en envisage and what uh, the doctoral student plus the supervisor uh, have uh, uh, done for that uh, 
looking for uh, relationship, contact uh, other labs, and so on and so on. Okay. And uh, uh, finally, uh, I will just present uh, uh, a study which uh, was made by uh, uh, um, some kind of company, uh, I would say, who work from the uh, uh, government, the French government, uh, and uh, especially uh, works uh, with the uh, Ministry of Research. And uh, they have made uh, a survey on doctoral supervision uh, in uh, 2018, uh, which was present uh, during a workshop uh, in 2018. Uh, so the conclusion, I start by the conclusion. <laughs> the conclusion is good in brackets. Supervision is the main factor of a good in brackets doctoral thesis, and uh, I think that everybody agree with that. But this is the conclusion of this analysis of survey. But what is interesting, uh, uh, to my opinion, uh, in that survey is that uh, how uh, the, the two parts, if I uh, resume uh, the supervision in two parts, doctoral uh, students and supervision, but you, you, you you have seen that there is only uh, not only two parts, but if I uh, sum up in two parts, uh, the criteria for uh, uh, the a good doctoral thesis are not the same. If we look to the supervisory criteria, uh, of course they put in uh, first the scientific expertise. So this is the first point uh, for the supervision, uh, meaning that the best expertise you have in a scientific field, then the best supervision you have. And of course, we know that is not the case. So the second uh, criteria is the capacity to convey knowledge in uh, and uh, know-how, the capacity to set up a good working environment, and the capacity to identify students' need, and the capacity to adapt to individual students' specifics. That's the criteria for the supervisory part of this survey. But if we look to the criteria for doctoral students, it's quite uh, different. The first criteria is availability. That means relationship, uh, free relationship with the supervision, very uh, frequent and so on and so on. Responsiveness to request. And they point out also major difficulties. And uh, the, 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 the first difficulty is stress and conflict management issues. Uh, and the second is insufficient, insufficient autonomy and creativity. And uh, if you looked at that, that uh, uh, difficulties that are pointed uh, out by uh, uh, the set of doctoral students, which are 1,000, it's not all the doctoral students, but uh, okay, a sample. Uh, you will see that all the rules uh, that are uh, uh, or the recommendations that are uh, pointed out by the European uh, Commission by the French rule is to uh, uh, decrease that part and to uh, focus on uh, autonomy, creativity. Uh, in brief, uh, the relationship between the supervision and the doctoral uh, students. So finally, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, end my talk uh, with uh, that uh, uh, point. Uh, what's next? So uh, the next is that the function of the supervisor is increasingly clearly defined and the responsibilities in and in it are made explicit now. So that means that supervision could not be uh, done like that. And maybe uh, we have to put some training courses for supervision. And this is uh, what we have done in France now and probably in other uh, European country in which supervision training courses are offered, but not today mandatory at this time. However, at a national level in France, the main representative of doctoral training believe that this will change soon and training courses will become mandatory. 
Okay, and I will uh, stop here. Thank you for your attention. And, and my last message is that uh, doing a PhD is a long distance race, of course, but you are not alone and uh, there are many uh, structures in which you, you can uh, uh, speak uh, and uh, got help. Thank you.